Hello and welcome to the channel. I'm Omnus and today I will react to the top 10 songs that got more popular, so, top 10 songs that gained popularity through their use in movies. There's going to be a bitch to type out that might be the longest out of I've ever read out on this channel, but I don't know. I've been doing it for quite a while now, so uh, I don't know. I forgot the timer right there. Uh, I'm kind of watching over my shoulder right now because, you, you know, my my kitten trend is like going around my recording equipment so i'm kind of like what are you doing there pal but i think he's doing fine you know he's just hiding by the computer right now so a little fucking rascal so um the slideshow is fight club which you know indicates of course the pixie song how's the fucking song called again i don't know um i forgot the song title but you know, that's really, you know, the only really popular picture song, that one uh, that was used in Fight Club, which, you know, popularized the song. So that, you know, that's really the only one that I can think of. Um, yeah, I believe that the slideshow is, or the slideshow, the, the thumbnail is um, almost famous, I believe, with the song Tiny Dancer, which, or, yeah, yeah, yeah I was like, is it Tiny Dancer or Tony Danza? <laughs> Because I, you know, usually make fun of that song. But I believe the song is called Tiny Dancer. You know, people mispronounce it as Tony Dancer. I'm not joking here. You know, I'm actually confused because I don't primarily listen to Elton John a lot. So, I'm not joking here. So, there you go. Outside of that, I can't really think of any um, examples. Because I don't, you know, really watch a lot of movies. But um, I'm open to hear more. Because, or here to see more. Because... I do like movies, but you know, you really have to sit down for it and watch it. You know, you can't just put it on and just chill. You really have to sit in front of it. So, not always have the pace for that, but I am open, you know, to watch more. So, there you go. Not that, e not that you guys care, but there you go. But just for me. Some of the most iconic songs in popular Well, it's, it's still relevant for the video though, because, you know, I would be a bit more knowledgeable about the subject, but, you know, there you go. ...only reached that level after they Tiny were Dancer, Tony Dancer. ...in motion pictures. Yeah, Tiny Dancer. And today we're and that's kind of a weird title to be honest, but you know, Elton John is a unique artist, so there you go. Our picks for the top 10 songs that gained popularity... What is this? Benny and June? <laughs> ben Benny and the Jets almost. No, 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 500 miles. Must have been already Eight miles. ...prior to the movie in which they were included not have been written specifically for the motion picture. Oh yeah, so a model will be excluded because it was written for the movie. Uh, you know, it just has to be picked for the movie. It just has to be an appropriate song. But, you know, not, not it can't be written for the movie because, you know, then it would uh, be a popular song for the movie. Then it would be linked with that movie. Although, you know, uh, loose, you know, indie songs will get the popularity too, like the Where's My Mind by by, uh, by Pixies. But, you know, you can't write it for the movie. You just have to, like, put it in there, get a, lic get, get a licensing going, and then, you know, uh, go on with it. So, there you go. So, I'm pretty sure that Lose Yourself is, like, pretty sure it was written for the movie, I'm pretty sure. And, you know, it's... M.M. didn't need a movie for, for that song to blow up, but, you know, he still did it, so there you go. They were chosen based on a mix of song quality so Jim Carrey. and overall recognition. And they must have gained more yeah, exposure probably. or popularity through their inclusion. What the fuck? Together, regardless of their initial success or lack thereof. Don't you want somebody to know? Don't you need I'm not a huge Jim Carrey guy. Number 10. Where is my mind? By Pixies. Fight Club. Gentlemen, yeah, Slasher. Welcome to Fight Club. The title question from this alt-rock The first rule of Fight Club. Don't talk about Fight Club. Norton's adult character in Fight Club. Someone in mind here? No. As he tries to make sense of his life with the help of Brad Pitt's psychotic instigator, Norton's inner monologue might sound a lot like the lyrics to this song. 
Is your voice in my head? With that in mind, Fight Club director David Fincher used this song to score the film's unforgettably explosive finale, and it's been associated with it ever since. Yep. a very strange time in my life. That's a powerful ending right there. The only time I actually enjoy the Pixie song, so there you go. Number 9. Mad World by Michael Andrews featuring Gary Jules, Donnie Darko. Cause I have Donnie Darko. A song was needed to sum up the emotional turmoil. Was it really popularized by the movie? Because I've heard of the Donnie Darko movie, you know, because Watch Mojo mentioned this in the last video I did, the One Show Music videos. Um, and I thought the song was just, you know, it was a Terry Fair song, got covered by Gary Jules, Michael Andrews, I'm pretty sure. Um, and, you know, got more popular with that, and then they made a movie, you know, with the song in it. So it did gain a lot of popularity because of that, and it got mean. So, yeah, it's a popular song. Amid all the Actually, got a lot, lot of history, if you think about it. Got in a movie, was, you know, it was covered, it was from an original band. You know, I'm not, not saying they're an original blokes, but I'm saying that it came from a great band and can't say I've really heard anything else by them, but maybe, I don't know, can't judge. I've got a lot, lot of history there, the Mad World song. Adoring cult movies I do like that. Why are you wearing that stupid place? The makers of Donnie Darko found that song in Mad World. While it was a top 40 hit in the 80s by Tears for Fears, this new version featuring stripped down ambient music and vocals by Gary Jules proved to be just the right kind of haunting song to tie the film's dark themes together. Man, I find it kind of funny, I find it kind of sad. That is a fat guy or a gal, I don't know. The best I've ever had. I can't tell what other Flip with all that fat flubbing around, so there you go. The original's UK chart position by going to number one. When the people run in circles, it's a very, very bad. I, you know, I wish, I wish that um, the Tears for Fear song always sounded like that, you know, from the original get go, because then they would get the credit, but you know. Didn't happen. I'm shipping up to Boston by Dropkick Murphys, The Departed. Oh, this song. I mean, yeah, Drop Dropkick Murphys got actually some, you know, very iconic hits though. You know, the yeah, I'm not gonna sing the song, but you know, you know the songs that they that they got. I really like hate their anthemic, really like beer pong ish, shouty style of music. But at the same time, they get popularity out of it. So I can't blame them, but I don't like that style. I know it from hearing the Dropkick Murphys version that I'm shipping up to Boston was written by folk troubadour Woody Guthrie. They didn't even write it, really. Rocking Irish spin, Rish? and director what Mark Spore says he correctly realized the song would make a good anthem for his movie The Departed. <laughs> After all, the movie's story of crooked cops and organized this song. crime is set in Boston, and has the same sense of violent energy as this Celtic punk track, which became... The, the movie kind of looks like an, um, a Shawshank Redemption wannabe. Who's the guy called again? Number seven, Tiny Dancer by Elton John, almost famous. Um, well, you know, the guy that's, I forgot his name, but the guy that, you know, it was a meme that he didn't get an Oscar for very long, and then he got an Oscar and the meme was dead. Um, I actually can't remember the guy, I will answer the meme, but, you know, never, never forget the meme. But I forgot the guy's name, so if any of you guys want to mention that, then go ahead. I don't get this entire scene really. Like, yeah, some teen um, stoners, you know, waving goodbye to like a hippie bus and they're singing Elton John's Tiny Dancer. I don't get the scene, but you know, you probably have to watch the movie to get the scene, you know, so there you go to his film about his time as a teenage Rolling Stone reporter. He looked to Elton Wait, John's that... scoring ballad. 
Is, is that the guy from uh, My Name's Earl? He actually, he actually really looks similar to uh, the My Na Name is Earl guy, the Earl, you know, Earl. But uh, with longer hair. That was actually pretty cool. Ballerina. What do I think of the show? You know, My Name's Earl. Eh, it's alright, you know, it's decent, so there you go. He's like drumming while there's no drum drumming on the track. Genius. Powerful reading of Bernie Taupin's lyrics manages to sum up. It's just about the feeling, man. Don't criticize him for that. You know, I just saw it. I was like, why you're drumming, my boy? But you know, and just say. Rock and roll life. And then I have to go. This is what the girl eventually says or something. Considered a non -starter. They're like enjoying the song and she's like blue balling the whole bus by saying like I have to go. Pop charts top I don't, I don't get it. Funny dancer eventually found its way into pop culture and got an extra boost through this flick. Did it really get more popular through the through this movie? Because Elton John was already a household name. But I guess what they're saying is this song got more popular. Although, you know, Elton John is one of the most famous musicians ever, but, you know, this song in particular got more popular, I guess. Oh, that's what the guy says, and then the girl's like, shut the fuck up, Elton John is on. <laughs> Amen to that girl. Number six. Plot twist. Old time rock and roll by Bob Seger. Risky business. Him putting that like raw fish in his mouth, that is risky business right there. The title doesn't lie. What oh. the fuck was he doing in his mouth? What the fuck? And they don't they don't show it again. Number six. Old time rock and roll by Bob Seeger. Risky business. What the fuck is he chewing on? What the fuck? He was chewing on like a uh, fucking shoe hole. Uh, how do you say that? A shoe layer. I don't know. That was weird. He kind of looks like Paul McCartney or the Paul McCartney uh, Ringo. He kind of looks like a Ringo right there. From afar. Or the Beatles haircut. Oh yeah, yeah, the classic microphone stand, holding it in front of your, you know, your bulge, or, you know, your legs. It looks like a dick, get it? I'm the lead singer, ah, oh, funny. I, I wanted to say, did, um, did Freddie Mercury do that, but I believe he always held it like in front of his chest, so uh, I don't know. ...that the song was lip-synced by a teenage character. Since it is now but it is like a cliche rock and roll move to hold the microphone standing in front, on, in front of your dick so it looks like an extended dick. That's kind of the joke, I guess. Or well, I'm just a pervert, I don't know. Music of their youth. What, what, what song is this? Well, I believe they just said it. <laughs> he, he fucking spazzed out at the end of the song. He like spazzed out on this fucking couch. Number five, the end. Oh my god. The doors, apocalypse. Number five, the end by the doors, apocalypse now. This is the fucking end. genius. That's probably gonna be done already. Fucking love this song. Francis Ford Coppola's meditation. I mean, this song with the apocalypse now movie, it was just fucking perfect. Apocalypse it really now was. Needed a song that gripped chaos and menace, and was era appropriate. I mean, Apocalypse Now is one of those movies that I, I haven't even watched and I know it's a great fucking movie, so do what I watch you will. It just looks fucking great, man. He made the right choice when he picked The Doors Harrowing The Egg. Yeah. Frontman Jim Morrison slowly transforms from a coiled symbol of danger to a nightmarish screaming Avenger 
And this is much like the transformation of Martin. It's pretty much the movie itself, although I, I just said I haven't watched it, but that's how it comes over to me. In the film. Yeah. Fuck me, baby. <laughs> I want to get the monetized, yeah. fuck me, baby. He's <laughs> by Dick Dale and his Deltones, Pulp Fiction. Uh, oh, hell yeah, Pulp Fiction. Director Quentin uh, by the way, Rip, Rip Dick Dale. I love this song. And, and this movie, of course. Placed soundtrack items. The only good John Travolta. Fuck me out. The only good, the only good thing John Travolta has ever done in his life. There we go. Classic from Dick Dale is in many ways the unofficial theme of Tarantino's masterpiece Pulp Fiction. Originally a Greek folk tune, this version is well suited for the flick, considering it blends frenzied guitar, moody rhythms, and sly horns into a wild stew. I actually really love the uh, drug dealer who kind of looks like the Big Lebowski. Another great fucking movie. I had a rough day and I just hate the fucking eagles. Give me a fucking break. <laughs> One of my favorite movie lines ever. And it's not even for Pulp Fiction, so there you go. Number... Oh. Like the movie itself. Yep, yeah, it's a fucking perfect man. Perfect song for a perfect movie. There you go. Fucking love that riff. Number three, Stuck in the Middle with You by Steeler's Wheel, Reservoir Dogs. Another Quentin Tarantino movie. His first two. <laughs> oh, this is so good. <laughs> He is just like dancing with a bloody knife in his fucking hands while like, you know, a guy in tape just screaming for his life while the guy's just having fun. It's just fucking genius. When it appeared on the radio in 1972, the song came off as an amiable piece of bluesy pop with endearingly frazzled lyrics that was also a platinum selling single for the band. Oh wait, so Bob Dylan. Tarantino had Michael Madsen sing and dance along with oh, him no, as he prepared like to Bob slice Dylan. off an ear in his gangster classic Reservoir Dogs. It became a movie song for the ages, and its popularity. He's not even cutting it though. But increased. He completely missed the mark. Yeah, it's a movie. It's not real, but you know, he didn't cut him. It, it's cheap, but it, you know, it's, it's a great fucking scene, but it's still cheap. Number two. Unchained Melody by the Righteous Brothers, Ghost. What are you doing? Oh wait, isn't this this girl that's just like making a pot for herself and then the guy's like helping her and shit? Oh, you know, you, you know, I'm gonna help you make this pot, although you're perfectly capable of, of doing it yourself, but sure. I couldn't sleep. Who knew that Potter I couldn't sleep. I also smoke shitloads. In the supernatural romance Ghost, Demi Moore and Patrick Swayze. Of course the guy's gonna sit down. Oh, of course he doesn't have a shirt on. With his perfectly hunk of body helping her and shit. Hmm, I wonder what, what is gonna happen next. Iced by this Righteous Brothers tearjerker. They, wait, they, they immediately kiss. Are they, or wait, maybe they're like men and wife already, so there you go. As singer Bobby Hatfield hits the towering heights of the melody, Moore and Swayze's undeniable chemistry is as evident as the mess they're making with that pottery wheel. Oh no. <laughs> the, the scene turned an already the, the guy fucking destroys her pot. Fuck that guy. Ballad into the ultimate manifestation of undying and then they make yes, then they make a dick together. Fuck Fuck each other already. Fuck sake, man. Fuck each other already. Like they're literally making a dick. Why are you making a dick? Why you can just why you can just give her a dick? It's uh, it's such a fuck all scene, man. It's it's not romantic. It's just pervy. It's just like 
It's not even an innuendo, it's just like, bam. Like, we're making a, a, a clay penis. Oh, why not have sex? You know, why not do it immediately? Why? You know, I guess it's a tease, it's teasing, it's foreplay, but it's still like, it's so fucking lame. Just fuck each other already. And while they're doing that now, so yeah, they're listening. Before we unveil our top pick, here are some honorable mentions. <laughs> well, you heard them, so there you go. Terrible song. Amazing, uh, how's this blow called again? Um, amazing David Hasselhoff cover though. Fucking love that cover. <laughs> I'm gonna be 500 miles by Proclaimers, Benny and June. One in Wonder Band, or Brothers, I guess. I'm gonna be the man! <laughs> <laughs> That's fucking vocal, man. Shook once, part two, bumble deep, eight mile. Did it really get more popular by the eight mile movie? I fucking love Shook once. That's, that's a great fucking rap tune. But I never heard the difference between part two and one. I never knew the difference, but maybe they have, you know, different parts or something. I don't know, I can't tell, but maybe they have. You know, tell me if I'm wrong, so there you go. Mamma Mia, Mama Mia by Abba. Uh, Mamma Mia the movie. Um, I don't agree. You know, it was already a fairly popular song, but I guess, you know, it got more popular with the movie. So I guess it's true, but not a lot. That's why it's in honorable mentions. I have no idea what's going on in the movie. Somebody to Love by Jim Carrey, that's fucking face, the cable guy. Like, oh wow, what the fuck? It doesn't matter at what time you pass it, Jim Carrey always has a terrible face. Like, he tries to be funny, but he tries to sing. You know, he tries to have a comedic scene, but, you know, I'm like, be funny or make a song. Don't combine the two together, but, you know, Jim Carrey wants to have it all, so, I guess. Number one. Oh, of course, yeah, sure. But, did, did it get more popular by the movie? Because it was already, like, a masterpiece, you know, 20 years after it's released, though, so... I'm kind of iffy on this one, but, you know, Bohemian Rhapsody deserved that number one spot for sure. Number one, Bohemian Rhapsody by Queen, Wayne's World. They just skipped the entire first uh, verse with, you know, the, the build up and the mama just killed a man, very melodic refrain. They just, they just skipped that whole fucking scene, that, that whole fucking part. Oh, fuck it, let's just get to the, well, I mean, the you know, the... The all over cluster fuck vocals. Let's just cut to that. Not saying it is a cluster fuck of a song, but that's what they cut to. You know, I, lo I love the song obviously, so can deny it. Alright, so you're driving around with your buddies and need to hear a song on the radio to which everyone can sing along. Thunderbolts are lightning, very, very frightening. Da -da -da -da. As Mike Myers and Dana Carvey proved in Wayne's I'm not a Wayne World guy. guy. Fucking hell. the first one. It has to be Bohemian Rhapsody. All of those overlapping Freddie Mercury overdubs mean that everyone will get a part, even if they have no idea what the words mean. Nope. Nope, 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 nope. Mia, mia, let me go. That's pretty easy though, this part of this. The song was a hit for Queen in the mid 70s, yeah. but there's no question it wouldn't still be as popular as it is today without this early 90s movie appearance. Uh, extra doubt, extra doubt. It's it's an amazing, powerful song on its own, though. You know, I don't think that like a mediocre movie is really gonna you know 
keep the song more relevant but you know it did make it a bit more popular again in that time i can't really say it's you know it made it more relevant you know still today you know that movie also 20 years ago so extra doubts but you know thanks wayne thank wayne's world for you know praising queen like everyone else but still, you know, glad that they did it. It's a funny scene, but you know, it's not that good of a movie. So there you go. Do you agree with our list? Oh yeah, and uh, no stairway to heaven. Uh, you know that part from Wayne's World. Well, Wayne's World actually does have you know quite a, a lot of funny scenes. The original, at least. They made a part two for some reason. Never watched it before. Never knew it existed. So there you go. Pretty dark. Huh? Your favorite song. Song. Why is he spe why is he like spashing out on his fucking nice couch though? He has a nice couch. Put on some fucking pants though, I don't have to see that. Yeah, that was, uh, he, was just, he just broke his neck. Yeah. They're actually having sex right now, you know, the, the two sluts from fucking Ghost. I mean, just get to the fucking bedroom already, and they did it, so, you know, they're listening. And, well, now they're fucking, so, you know, I'm glad for them. Have a good time. Bye, have a great time. There you go. Oh, you know, nice, nice uh, record table. Taking off the, the record and putting it back into the jukebox. Fucking perfect. I have to say, um, Watch Motion doesn't have a lot of good endings, but that was probably my favorite ending I've ever seen from Watch Motion, so do it what you will. Video has 5.7 million views. I'm not sure if I said that already, but those are those are a lot of uh, fucking views. What? Where's All Star Smash Mode? Shrek. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's kind of a dead meme, honestly, but sure. Wayne's World was probably held by William Rhapsody, not the other way around. Exactly. I, I was thinking, like, did Wayne's World really help Queen? But, you know, Queen helps them. That's how I see it. So there you go. That doesn't even make sense. Fuck you. That's to that totally makes fucking sense. William Rhapsody was already incredibly power po fucking up popular long before Wayne's World e even started production. There you go. Guardians of the Galaxy soundtrack is one massive example of resurgence of so many songs. Of so many songs. Guardians of the Galaxy, in my opinion, is kind of like one of those indie bloke movies that, you know, it's a good movie, I like it, but, um, you know, I think it's kind of too n nerdy or kind of too stupid for me. You know, there are a lot of like nerdy blokes in the movie that mention like retro geeky shit, like, you know, hooked on the feeling and they're like singing their favorite retro songs because oh we're old school we lived back in the 80s and the 90s and, I, and I'm just like you know yeah sure you like you like old music everyone does get the fuck over yourself so um, I, you know I'm not a huge fan of Guardians because it's kind of like one of these nerdy geeky movies that you know tries to have a lot of references like classic references to mo movies and music and shit like that and I, you know, I just think they try too hard to, to um, you know, to appeal to like old school blokes like me. So there you go. Um, yeah, um, Time the Dancer was in YouTube before 2000. Are you high? Yeah, but it got more popular. It gained popularity through the movie. Read the fucking title. But I guess I think a better title for this video would be Top 10 Songs That Returned to Popularity Through the Use of Movies. Exactly. Fucking perfect title. I was ser seriously expecting Alster from Shrek to be. <laughs> he literally called it a Shrek song. <laughs> Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> yeah, let's just keep it at that. Um, Twist and Shout, uh, Ferris Bueller's Day Off, Do You Love Me, Count the Dirt Dancing, Stand By Me, Benny King, In Your Eyes, Peter Gabriel, I Will Always Love You, Winnie Houston, of course. And the movies, but uh, I really don't, don't care outside of first Bueller's Day Off. Uh, Fair Bueller's Day Off. Uh, could have done this list uh, just off of the songs used in Guardians of the Galaxy. Galaxy? Gal yeah, I didn't even edit it. 
Um, our top number one uh, will be And I'll Always Love You from Dolly Parton, Bodyguard, and It's Missing. I guess. Well, wait, what? N no. I Will Always Love You didn't gain popularity through Bodyguard because it was already a smash hit. You know, Dolly Parton, but especially with the users. So, no. But maybe they mean, you know, Dolly Parton, the, ver the, the original version, that got more popularity, but who fucking cares? Everyone only cares about the Whitney Houston version, there you go. What is Lot by Hathaway on Night at Roxbury? I don't know that. Um, I'm sure Bohemian Rhapsody was famous long before any movie made it famous, exactly. Not as famous as you think. I mean, she does say that. Believe me, it wasn't nearly as well known before Wayne's World popularized it. X for doubt. Uh, maybe in America it wasn't as popular, but in England it's it always has been. Voted Britain's best song of all time. There you go. Uh, yeah, let's just end up with that. Um, there you go. That's the list. Hope you've enjoyed it. Like and subscribe to, to the channel for free this live one. Let me know what you thought about this video, and I will see you in the next one. Peace.